so I think I can start finally. And what is this about? Um, basically, yesterday I tried out the kind of new plugin that's called Regroover. Uh, it's supposed to split your drum breaks into individual layer uh, layers, and also you can make uh, like uh, your own drum kit out of it. Anyway, uh, I would say the video was terrible as I literally just downloaded the plugin and opened it and started to play with it and streaming it as well. <coughs> and as a result, uh, uh, it was confusing because I didn't know what to do. Uh, I was like exploring it and sometimes it was boring, sometimes it was confusing. Uh, and yeah, it wasn't just the best one I could make. So here's the second one. I read the whole fucking manual uh, all the way to the bottom and I made some notes as well. So now I will show you the plugin like in way better uh, manner than before. So let's start. <sighs> I will load the, the first, the same beat as yesterday and it will be interesting comparison in terms of like speed and the results i can get when i finally know what i'm doing <coughs> anyway uh it's analyzed and as you can see uh there are four layers uh the four layers are actually the minimum it can split your break uh in and uh, that's kind of shitty because uh, in this break I will play it. Okay, th they are four layers actually. There's a kick. Um, yeah, there's. Uh, uh, sorry for that. Uh, uh, there's a kick. There's a snare. Uh, there's some hi hat layer, and there's also this weird reverse percussion. And let's see what Regroover made out of that. So let's try out uh, the first layer. Ah, yeah, sorry. Maybe I should start with this top layer, uh, top panel first. Uh, as obviously you can hear, it's badly sync. So let's sync it uh, so it fits the tempo. Here it says. Uh, 178 I guess uh, it's really small um, so I will divide it by two and now we got 89 which is uh, well weird because my project tempo is 90 but as you can hear when I'll play the whole thing it will be matching so this button basically turns on and off uh, the sync to the host. Uh, so when I push, uh, when I play this, uh, now it plays just a break. And when I hit the uh, host sync button, it will react to uh, the host uh, playback. <laughs> I don't know what there is 89, but yeah, it fits. Uh, I tried it out yesterday, so I can safely say it fits. Uh, as you can see, there is no grid, and I can easily turn the grid on by clicking this. Uh, you can choose between there is subdivisions. I think yeah, I like uh, um, my editing like. Uh, <laughs> how, do I, uh, how to say it like perfect so I will choose uh, the highest possible value and here's also the click length button you can select the length of the clip but it doesn't do anything in here I think it just relates to the uh, to the whole exported loop uh, you can export holding the, uh, by holding this thing and as you can see Here's our four bars loop and let's go back to the regroover. Uh, if I change it to one bar, it will be just this 
short soundbar clip. Uh, anyway, you can also set it to clip length or none. Uh, not sure which none is. Uh, uh, I can look it up. <laughs> So it'll be a little bit harder. Anyway, um, uh, let's continue. I think that's all you can do in this top bar, uh, except uh, those three buttons and the uh, limiter section. Uh, basically, here you can save and load projects. Uh, when you um, like uh, play with the break in here and you save it, it saves as a regroove project and it has the sample in it. So uh, when you are like sending your project files to a friend, you have to send them also the regroove files. You can export it. Uh, you can export it uh, as a layers, layer mix down, pattern mix down, marker selection and marker selections. Excuse me, guys. What does it mean? <sighs> when you set layers, uh, yeah, no, no surprise, it will export uh, like the individual la layers. Uh, uh, when you hit layers mix down, it will export the whole break. When you hit uh, marker selection, uh, it will, I think this will uh, save the selections into individual files I will get to the selection later and uh, yeah and there's this marker selection pattern uh, fuck I don't know what this does <laughs> I don't remember it from the manual <laughs> so let's skip to the limiter section uh, you can turn it off on and off by dragging this thing and you can set uh, the output volume uh, if your signal is peaking you will see it uh, because this thing will be blinking so let's go to the layers uh, I will first talk about the layer controls um, basically uh, you can turn the layer on and off uh, so you won't hear it in the playback uh, you can solo it uh, you can uh, like uh, turn this knob to uh, select uh, if you want to more of the mono signal or the stereo signal Now we've got all the motor signal on the break. And now we should get still. And here's also the panning of the light. Here's also this output select menu and you can actually route this layer uh, to the channel in free to loops. So you can like make the whole layer go in here and put some effects on it. Then there's this volume fader. And you can also lock the layer, uh, which makes uh, it like, uh, which prevents the changes when you are splitting the clip and modifying the clip. Uh, so it will guarantee you 
that layer will remain unchanged. Uh, here we also can see the nodes. Uh, every layer has assigned a MIDI node, so we can play them independently. Here's a MIDI in, uh, like uh, <laughs> some LED, LED bullshit, which will be blinking when the MIDI is going in. Um, let's turn those layers back on, or unsolo this one, sorry. Um, yeah, one more thing about the uh, layers and their in individual settings or uh, like uh, effects. Each layer has this effect section at its own right. Uh, it's basically only the gate, uh, the free band EQ, uh, where it's just uh, the uh, low pass, high pass and some bell uh, EQ. Uh, then there's yeah compressor, uh, just an SSAP I will say, and also a simple saturator. Uh, we'll get to those later. And here's the little splitting section, and I will get to this right now uh, after we audition the individual layers. So as you could he uh, already hear, uh, this doesn't sound quite right. So let's go the second one sounds like it should be the head slayer yeah this is clearly the kick layer but it also sounds like shit and this is clearly a lot of frequencies that belong to the other instruments but ended up in here so uh, it's a shame I can't set like less layers in here. Uh, anyway, you can hack it and uh, I will show you how. There's this uh, erase icon. I don't know how is it called right now. And uh, yeah, it's annotation tool, sorry. And you can basically make selections like this. And Whatever's in this selection, when you hit the split button, it makes uh, the whole thing like uh, remake, uh, uh, like reboot or reset itself and analyze it again differently. Um, and everything that's in this region has to go away from it to some other layer. So you can also set more layers, but it doesn't make any sense in here, I guess. Uh, and the activity, uh, it's bound to the complexity of the beat. So if you have just some simple beat, uh, you can set it to low. If you have uh, some really complex beat, it's good to set it to high. So I don't know, I, I will just leave it here and let's see what the new split does for me. Let's split it. Okay, as you can uh, as you can see, there's nothing in here. So let's audition these layers. Kick sounds a little bit better, I would say, but there are still some artifacts that clearly don't belong there. Okay, I think I just understood what this means. Have you seen? looping just this one bar so let's set it yeah let's leave it there um, so yeah still those heads still sound like some really shitty mp3 and what about the snares again shitty mp3 so what I will try to do now is uh, that I will try to isolate everything that's not the snare. So basically almost everything in this layer. I will maybe lock this one. 
and see what will happen. So the thing will be distributed in these two layers and not in the third one, uh, four one, sorry. Yeah, what I can show you with this selection is that uh, basically it's snapping to the grid. Uh, I think if you turn the grid off, the snapping is off too. You can delete it by holding shift and clicking it. And you can turn the grid back on. Yeah. And when you hold, I think, shift, not the alt button on PC. Uh, it's also in non-clipping mode or no snapping mode or what is it? So here goes my snare layer. You can see only the snares are what should remain. And now I will just hit the split button again. So now. Yeah, nice. It's just the snares. There's some weird tail though. It's probably left there from some other instrument like the hi hat. Let's hear the kick. You can feel how much could go wrong in here. Yeah, okay. So as you can hear, there's also a lot of garbage going on. And this will be a little bit more tedious, I guess. Because the kicks aren't exactly sitting on the grid. There's some like ghost kicks or something like that. And I wouldn't like to get rid of that. So. One thing which would be really nice in here would be some zooming tool so I can actually see what I'm doing in here rather than guessing it. And another interesting thing, uh, not interesting, is a thing I really don't like about this plugin is that basically you don't know what it will do. You can just guess. And hand in hand with that goes a second thing that there is no back button so you just push the split button and hope for the best and if you screw up you can't go back you can only save your project like after each split which is <coughs> yeah obnoxious a lot so here are my kicks I want to clean up and I hope this garbage will move to the head slayer. It's the only one it can be moved to. Okay, so let's hear the kicks again. Okay, so there's still some garbage left. I can see it here. For the part of that, it sounds kind of well, all right. So I'll cut those sections a little bit more to make them go away I uh, hope I don't screw my kicks too much let's play it once again and here it So 
there's some bullshit going on right here. I think it was here and here. Uh, I can see it better. So yeah, once more. Perfect, but uh, it's something I guess one could work with. And now let's hear the last layer where all the gar garbage went. And uh, I'm also almost scared to push this button. It sucks a bit because you can hear there's clearly some leftovers from the snare sound. And when you hear a snare, for itself, you can hear it sh should sound better. So I don't know. I, I will just try to uh, make the selections where the snares are to make it split the sound once more, possibly a little bit better. Unlock this, lock this, because I don't want I don't want my kicks to be touched. And let's see what it does to my snare now. So okay. Yeah. It's a little bit shame. I think there is not an algorithm that could tell, like, okay, this sounds like a snare, so let's analyze this layer for frequencies that could cross possibly match, uh, like, go to snare and and extract them, but leave uh, leave them leave the rest there. So now you can hear it took everything from here, and so the snare is now. Uh, going with the uh, hi-hat hit which is something i didn't want it but uh yeah silly me because i should have realized that everything will be going from here to here so my hats are now sounding still shitty maybe i will now try to Split. Hmm. I think that won't be good, but one last try. Uh, there's something like there's a little bit of a kick left. Right now I'm in the phase when I'm not sure what more I could do to make it better. Because I feel like it's already screwed up. So uh, anyway, I'll show you quickly what you can do with uh, this expansion kit. Because there's another kind of selection, and uh, it's these gray gray ones. And with this selection, which behaves uh, like in terms of controlling it uh, the same way as the splitting section, the annotation section, sorry, uh, you can actually render this one and either like place it into a Windows folder or into your playlist or into your uh, into this expansion kit which I will show you right now and okay let's select some kick just for a quick yeah I don't have my um, midi Piano uh, 
connected right now. So I'm clicking it with my mouse. Uh, obviously, you can see uh, it's linked to MIDI notes, so you can play on your uh, on your pads or on your uh, MIDI devices, basically. Anyway, uh, let's go to the editor. Uh, okay, I'll add some something more, so I can just show the delete function. So when I have this selected, I can just uh, push backspace and it's gone. Uh, I can preview it. I can load external file. I won't be doing this right now. Uh, and that's actually one of the limits of this thing. Uh, and that's it can't load uh, loops that are longer than 30 seconds. Uh, and it can only lo load uh, um, what uh, a files and cat files i think nothing more um yeah so let's go back here you can also turn the pad on and off you can solo it uh i think with sure That's great. Okay, you can solo it and yeah, it's so fine. Uh, then you have this controls and effects section for each pad. So basically, there's uh, the waveform control. You can select the region which will be assigned to a pad. You can flip the motherfucking thing, like reverse it. And everything you can do down here. And then there is uh, the envelope section. Okay, I guess it's also quite self. Sorry. Um, then again, you can output those pads to uh, separate mixed channels in your DAW, and also there is a really limited effect section. Again, the same three band EQ as in the layer controls, and the same compressor. And finally, the mix section which corresponds again to the layer controls section uh, on the left. Uh, you can uh, play with the mono stereo signal, you can play with the panning, uh, and you can also uh, turn it up or down in terms of volume. <sighs> anyway, there should be also some setting of yeah, for the expansion kit, trigger, toggle, and hold, uh, which basically uh, uh, changes uh, the way the sound is played when you press the button. Uh, yeah. Uh, so trigger. Uh, I think the trigger works in a way that you just the when you push it. Uh, then it will play the whole sound at once. The toggle works in a way that when you push the push the pad, uh, it will start start playing, and when you release the pad, it will stop playing. And but uh, it won't go over the length of the whole sample. And when you start hold, it will uh, play the like it will loop infinitely. I'm not sure if I can get it to work with my keyboard. This is the layers playing, and uh, here is C5. So I should be set to C5. Yeah. Yeah. This is our snare pad, and it's set to loop mode, uh, to hold mode. So. 
can here it's looping. Uh, uh, when I select toggle, Okay, sorry, when, uh, when you press it in toggle mode, it just repeats until you hit it again. And so trigger is the classic one. And the same settings also apply for the layers. Uh, yeah, and there's this safe and library path. So when you are like running regroover on some other PC you can select when to load uh, stuff and from and uh, yeah that's it so basically uh, this is for the pads um, I think it's like a bit redundant to show you what uh, effects to like EQ it's EQ and a compressor is compressor also, I was playing with that uh, in the yesterday stream. You can check out if you are like interested more in the, just me just playing with this shit. Uh, anyway, what I wanted to tell about this plugin is uh, I like the idea. It's basically something that could help me solve some problems in my mix downs because sometimes it's hard to uh, equalize and like uh, fit the uh, break in your mix down right uh, and I think this could help but what I hate about it is it's really a guessing game you can somehow affect what will happen but you never know for sure and uh, there, yeah there is no back button so it sucks big time anyway I, I think I'm gonna keep this thing for just a little bit longer and and see if it can help me in one of my tunes uh, because uh, there's exactly the problem I mentioned with the break. I need like a, a EQ separately in terms of layers, and it could help. But I'm not sure if I can get it like to split the uh, split the break properly into something I can actually work with, or if it will sound uh, again like a, some shitty beat playing for from an old tape. Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, guys, I think uh, that will be everything for today. Uh, and yeah, if, if you're interested about something, uh, I'll be maybe go just through my notes. If there's something interesting I should mention and I forgot about it. Before I uh, before I finish the stream, yeah, it's true. I didn't find a way you could like change the BPM manually, but at the end of the day, I didn't really need to, so it's okay. Yeah, I didn't mention you can rename the layers. Oh, I guess that's basically it. Nothing interesting. Uh, what I like in set already. So, so this is it. Uh, there's uh, actually there's I think uh, three days trial period on supplies on the regrouper. Yeah, but is it? 
yeah, is there, but it's unfortunately the type of trail that uh, wants your credit card. So if you hit it, uh, you won't be pleased. Anyway, I'm uh, already uh, already like leasing a few plugins from them, so I didn't mind. Uh, and maybe I will like rent it for a month and see if it's any good, um, and then decide if I will keep it or not. Um, I definitely recommend to check out some more uh, YouTube videos because those guys, I think they will show you, they will like be better with it. Uh, they will have the video better prepared and maybe actually make something interesting out of the break they put there. But uh, I, I've been trying this for a while and I've been rather struggling, so not sure. It's interesting, but mm, uh, I just wish uh, the programmers work a bit more on this one and make it a little bit smarter in terms of splitting the layers. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching and see you some next time.